Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Drew Sinjir here. Today, we're back with yet another World of Warcraft reaction. Today, we're going to be checking out the complete history of World of Warcraft in 23 minutes. Now, this video is made by Hidden Azeroth, so I want you guys to check out his channel and make sure to subscribe to him. Y'all don't even got to subscribe to me unless you want to. I ain't going to stop you. But uh, yeah, he put in pretty much all the work that's going to be in this video, so I appreciate it so much. And uh, yeah. Without further ado, let's get into this video. So, you're new to WoW and want to know what's going on, or you're just trying to figure out which horde you're a part of. Here's Actually, facts. I'm new and I'm trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. <laughs> the entire history of Azeroth in 23 minutes. Way let's back go. At the start of the universe, there were Titans, which are gods born out of planets, kind of. The Titans formed a pantheon, which went around looking for more baby Titan planets called World Souls. One of these okay. planets was named Azeroth, currently inhabited by a bunch of elementals. A ah. group of beings who wanted to kill the Pantheon named the Void Lords were also looking for world souls and sent their servants to the old gods to go find and corrupt them. Some old gods found- Okay, he's speeding through this pretty fast. ...on Azeroth and started bleeding bugs on everything. The Pantheon eventually finds Azeroth too and they start fighting and they everyone. All... First the elementals, then the old gods. The oh! Kill the old gods without killing Azeroth so they build prisons instead. They leave behind a bunch of metal guys and also some dragons to look after Azeroth and guard the prison in their absence. On All the right. upper section of the universe, the Titan Sargeras learns the old gods could corrupt Titan planets and decides the only reasonable solution is to kill all life in the universe. Wow. Okay. But he said, oh wait, they, they can do that? Uh, yeah, we're killing them. So he starts building a massive army called the Burning Legion by corrupting inhabitants of Titan planets. To take them the over. The isn't happy that all their planets are being corrupted, so they try to calm Sargeras down, telling him that the army is pointless because they found a world soul strong enough to defeat the Void Lords. Azeroth. Sargeras responds by killing the Pantheon and imprisoning the Wow, he actually that killed them. ...and destroy Azeroth, fearing what would happen if a Titan that powerful was corrupted. Unfortunately, Sargeras forgot to ask where Azeroth was first, so he has to start looking for it. Another powerful world. <laughs> wow, what a genius. Before he killed them, and when they know the answer, he <laughs> he, he just went Souls for it. Argus, a planet inhabited by the Eridar, who are led by Archimon, killed Jaden, and Velen. Sargeras wants to corrupt Argus and approaches the free rulers in disguise, offering them immense power with no strings attached. Archimon. At this point, isn't he becoming the own titan he's fearing, though? Because he's just killing everyone. And kill Jaden except for power like suckers, and most of the Eridar get corrupted, but Velen realizes it's a trick and refuses. <laughs> Velen prays for guidance, and a race of sentient chandeliers called the Naru hear him and send a spaceship, which Velen and the remaining uncorrupted Eridar use to flee Argus. The uncorrupted group changes their name to the Draenei, which means the Exile. Draenei! Kill Jaden okay. Is angry about their escape and vows to hunt them down. Sargeras' machine lets him regenerate anyone in his army, making them effectively immortal. Wow. Meanwhile, back on Bro Azeroth, invented the immortality. Old drive their guards crazy and make a curse that turns stuff into meat, meaning these guys turn into these guys. A big magic pool called gotcha. the Law of Eternity that was left behind by the Titan starts hyper evolving deer and squirrels into a race called trolls. The trolls dub themselves the Zandalari and form okay, the Zandalari so how... Empire, which has a strict caste system. The lowest caste decides it being. This is how all the uh, races are getting made. In the lowest caste, or hordes. And leaves to form their own empires. One of these empires settles by the Well of Eternity and evolve even further, transforming into elves. The oh. formed elves create the Kaldoria Empire. Led by Queen Ajara, they use the Well of Eternity to gain magical okay. and technological superiority, allowing them to swiftly defeat the Zandalari and take over Kalimdor. The Kaldora's excessive use of a Well of Eternity lets Sargeras magically access Azeroth, but he still has no idea where it is in physical space, so he needs to rely on opening portals to invade. Since he needs a powerful mage to open the portal, Sargeras reaches out to Ajara and offers her a place uh -huh. at his side. Ajara agrees and uses the Well of Eternity to summon a burning I don't trust that Azeroth. dude. The dragons in an elf rebellion led by Tyrande Whisperwind and brothers Illidan and Malfurion Stormrage fight to stop Illidan, Ajara and okay. the Ancients. Attempting to gain so we're getting to the point where I actually know some things. In power against the Legion, Illidan pretends to join Ajara's forces. Sargeras is so grateful he stabs out Illidan's eyes and gives him cool demon vision. This allows Illidan yeah. to see the true power of a burning Legion, and he begins to fear their defeat on Azeroth will ultimately yeah. be pointless. One of the five aspects named Elfarian is driven mad by the old gods, who convince him to steal the ever aspect's powers by making a weapon called the Dragon Spawn in the guise of fighting the Legion. Once a weapon is built, Nafarian blows everyone up with a wow. cage that is named a Deathwing to show off how edgy and cool he is. Malfurion steals <laughs> the Dragon Soul and hides it. Deathwing is sealed in Deep Helm, a big cave at the core of Azeroth. The Rebellion shuts down the portal and stops the Legion, but the Well of Eternity is destroyed in the process, which causes a big magical explosion called the Centering that breaks Kalimdor into a bunch of little pieces. Right. Once the Kaldori capital sinks into the ocean, the old god Nazoff turns Ajara and her followers into fish. Obsessed with power of a night well and fearing enough. Shit, yeah, we saw the whole animation about that as well. For Legion invasion, Ilden uses water reeds stolen from a well of eternity to make a new well in Mount Hyjal. The ever elves are angered by this and throw Ilden in jail for his actions. The remaining elves fight over Goodbye, a <laughs> well and break into two factions. The night elves stay on Kalimdor and the highborn travel to the eastern kingdoms and make a new font of magical energy called the Sunwell. They rename themselves to the High Elves. The children right. of Brightwell and Northrend are being born mutated. These mutated children are ordered to be killed, but some are snuck to the Eastern Kingdoms instead. Here they form tribes and call themselves humans. One group of humans. Wow, so the humans are 
deformed in this. That's actually kind of crazy. So deformed is, is human, basically. The Arafi tribe begins to unite the other groups under one banner, forming the I Kingdom actually didn't of Arafar. know that. Eventually, the Kingdom of Arafar grows so large that several of its biggest cities declare independence and break off into the kingdoms of Gilneas, Altrak, Dalaran, Kul Tiras, Stormwind, and Lordaeron. The Damn. The alive themselves with humans to That many humans they created, they segregated that much. The trolls living in the eastern kingdoms, while the night elves and dragons fight the old god bugs and block from the titan prison of Ankaraj. Right. The high elves teach the humans magic, and some of the humans start to accidentally summon demons and elementals to protect against the threats created by humans having magic, the leaders of Dalaran decide to give one human a whole bunch more magic. This person is called the Guardian, and they pass their power on to the next person the council chooses when they retire. All right. Garris, who still has no idea Makes sense. Is Good system right there. trying to open another portal to invade for but opening an army-sized portal requires a lot of magic, so Sargeras can only open a small portal and send a less powerful mini-version of himself called an Avatar for it. <laughs> Avatar then proceeds to start eating dragons in order to gain more magic. But dragons aren't a fan of being Fair eaten, enough. So they ask the humans for help, and the humans send the current guardian, Adrian, oh. who goes to Northrend and kills the Avatar, sealing its body in the tomb of Sargeras so it can't I was about to say, I was going to start another war, but no, he, he just got taken down just like that. ...be resurrected. Unbeknownst to Adrian, a portion of Sargeras' soul powering the Avatar jumps into her when she kills it and proceeds to hide there. Adrian decides oh. someone else getting to choose who gets her powers is lame, so she goes into hiding. Remember Velen and those goats on... That's interesting. So he just got taken out. So just a piece of him just went into her. The That's kind of crazy. The Legion, they just crashed onto a peaceful planet called Draenor and made friends with the orcs, a race of shaman who are happy to share their planet. Everyone is friendly and these two races are sure to be lifelong pals. Back on Azeroth, the dwarves are living inside a mountain when their king dies. I feel like that's Suddenly, not true <laughs> for some reason. Three hammers breaks out and the dwarves split into the Bronzebeard, Darkiron, and Wildhammer clans. The Bronzebeard okay. win and take over Ironforge. Angry over losing the war, the Dark Irons try to summon elementals to kill the other clans, but they do too good a job and accidentally summon Ragnaros, the Fire Lord, who traps the Dark oh. Iron Dwarves inside a Black Rock Mountain and forces them to act as his oh. slaves. Adwin is that is messed up. A child named Medivh. That is messed her, up. Waiting fragments of Sargeras' soul jump into Medivh and hide inside him. In a stunning display of nepotism, Adwin gives her infant child the powers of a guardian. The human kingdom of Stormwind. Goes okay, I can see how that could go really bad. So he became her son, and she gave him the powers. That Mr. could be bad. Rashi trolls. During a troll attack on Stormwind City, even now adult Medivh uses his powers as the guardian to obliterate the Murder time. The yep. He's heralded as a hero and welcomed as the new guardian. Sargeras remains undiscovered inside of him. On Draenor, Kildraden is tracked down Velen and Vidranai. He reaches out to an orc shaman named Gul'dan, offering him power if he helps turn the orcs against him. Gul'dan oh. agrees and proceeds to frame Vidranai for attacking yeah. orc villages. The orcs respond by banding together to stop Vidranai. Gul'dan forms a cool new group called the Horde, and a secret ingredient is fell magic. He convinces the Horde to drink the blood of a demon Manoroth, which has the side effect of turning their skin green and also enslaving them to the Legion. <laughs> he installs a bloodthirsty black hand as a puppet warchief. This new fell crazed Horde slaughters Vidranai, who flee into the forest led by Velen. Under Warchief Blackhand, the Horde is reckless and destructive. Quickly, they eat all the food on Draenor and need a new place to live. Sargeras sees this as an opportunity to have his avatar freed from the tomb and tells Gul'dan about a lush planet the Horde can be called Azeroth. Back on Azeroth, Sar Honestly, it's so interesting because if you guys haven't watched my other reactions, I've basically been diving through like a bunch of the cinematics and other stuff. And so it's really interesting when I see something I know and just getting like the backstory handed to me in like 10 seconds. Sargeras begins to corrupt been, uh, enlightening, to say the least. ...him to help Gul'dan open a dark portal, a massive gate that connects Azeroth to Draenor. The orcs pour through, marking the beginning of the First War. The First War right. rages on for three years between the Horde and the Kingdom of Stormwind, led by King Lane Rin. The Kingdom yeah. of Stormwind still believes Medivh is their ally, and he continues to act as the Guardian. An orc named Garona meets and befriends Medivh and his apprentice Khadgar. Garona abandons the Horde and sides with humans. Together, Khadgar and Garona discover that Medivh is responsible for opening the portal and team up with General Anduin Lothar to kill Medivh. Orgrim wow, okay. By Black Hand's brutality towards his own soldiers it's interesting seeing whose side Rock everyone chooses. Orgrim wins and kills Black Hand. Grona returns to Stormwind to deliver her report of Medivh's death. While informing King Ren of the situation, Grona is possessed by Horde warlocks and assassinates the king against her will. Without its leader, Stormwind falls to... Can somebody explain to me in the comment section, how does somebody possess someone? Like, they just die and they just, like, get the option to? Because why wouldn't everybody do that, you know? Because they might want to live longer? Like, why? what makes somebody else be able to possess someone? The Horde, ending the First War. The survivors of Stormwind flee north to Lordaeron, where Anduin Lothar convinces the other kingdoms to assist. Together, they begin to plan a second war against the Horde and unite into the Alliance of Lordaeron. Meanwhile, Doomhammer's Horde marches north from Stormwind towards Ironforge to get resources. The Horde fights the dwarves and gnomes, leaving them trapped in their cities. Yeah, the Horde continues north I kind of felt like they would win that. Defended, so they head past it and poke at the High Elves and Quell Philos for a bit before turning around. Gul'dan betrays the Horde and leaves for a tomb Sargeras. Wow, it's got denied by Sargeras everyone. And ignores orders to open a portal, instead planning to steal the power of a tomb for himself. Sargeras doesn't like being betrayed, so demons eat Gul'dan. Yeah. Orgrim Doomhammer is unaware of Gul'dan's oh, wow. destruction and begins to... Wow, I didn't even end up knowing what ended up happening to Gul'dan. He just got bodied. Originally successful, Doomhammer had been counting on Gul'dan's forces to bolster the assault, and when he learns they have abandoned the Horde, he's forced to undergo an incredibly yep. costly retreat to Black Rock Mountain. Unaware that Gul'dan is already dead, Doomhammer dispatches the sons of a former... Oh, I just know. Dalrend and Maim, along with a contingent of orcs to slay Gul'dan. 
the pursuing human forces free the besieged dwarves and gnomes who pledge their <laughs> sure. alliance. The in there. The horde makes their final stand at Black Rock Mountain. Orgrim Doomhammer kills Anduin Lofar to break the human spirit, yeah. only for him to be replaced by the paladin Turalyon, who captures Doomhammer and rallies the alliance into pushing the horde back through the dark portal. Khadgar deactivates the portal, closing the gateway between Azeroth and Draenor and ending the second war. Rend made a contingent of orcs arrives at Black Rock Mountain after the alliance departs and occupy the fortress for themselves, fortifying can I just say shout out to this dude for having like the like the most quickly detailed explanations ever like literally I've ever seen. Black Rock Mountain after the alliance departs and occupy the fortress for themselves, fortifying the keep from attackers. They create the okay, cool so new they, dark horde. They there. Ingredient is dragons. The Dubs. victorious alliance rebuilds Stormwind, naming the adolescent son of Lane Wren Varian as king. The alliance also puts the orcs they captured into internment. Putting a kid in charge is crazy. To one such camp. The High Elves, feeling that the protection of Lordaeron was prioritized over their capital, Quelphalos, leave the Alliance. Back on Draenor, Ooh. the Orc Shaman Ner'zhul finds himself leading the remnants of the Horde on a still-dying world. He plans to open portals to other planets to plunder their resources, because it worked so well last time. But he yeah. needs to steal magical artifacts from Azeroth, so he re oh. the Dark Portal. Great work, Khadgar. This dude's just stealing shit. Soldiers through to retrieve the artifacts. They succeed, but the Alliance decides to go on the offensive, electing to send a group of soldiers led by Turalyon, Khadgar, and some other people into the Dark Portal in order to end the Horde once and for all. Isn't there, like, a good chance the people from that world come through to yours though corrupted by the power of the artifacts nerzul opens a massive number of portals at once tearing yeah. up the fabric of draenor and abandoning the horde the planet yeah. is destroyed and pulled into the twisting never oh, the whole planet got destroyed called the outlands in order to save azra oh shit i didn't know that off from the might of a now stranded horde cadgar collapses the dark portal trapping himself in the alliance expedition in the outlands presumed dead statues of the leaders of the expedition are erected in the newly rebuilt stormwind and wow nah that's actually messed up so they just but that's a presumed dead, so maybe they didn't end up dying there? I don't... That's kind of messed up. Y'all just stuck there? Betrayal of the Horde. Kil'jaeden turns him into an evil hat and a sword called Frostworm that have the power to raise the dead. Then he drops him on... Az Wait, so... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So how did he just become that? Stormwind. Angered by Ner'zhul's betrayal of the Horde, Kil'jaeden turns him into an evil hat and a sword called... Oh, he just turned him into it? So that's how you can become the Lich King now. Wow! So this dude's like behind a lot of shit. Have the power to raise the dead. Then he drops him on Azeroth in order to weaken the human kingdoms in preparation for a legion invasion. He also gives right. Nerzul a few demons called Dreadlords to help speed things along. That's crazy how far that camps, ends up going down. Brawl, the friends Doomhammer, and together they rally the orcs into rebellion and escape the camps. They build a cool new horde, and the secret ingredient is friendship. But Orgrim is killed. <laughs> Aww. The war chief. Brawl leads the orcs to the lost continent of Kalimdor in order to escape the humans. During the voyage, they meet with the dark spirit trolls and the torrent. Hey. The Ner'zhul, now called the Lich King, has had a few years to get ready, and he's starting to build a following. He needs powerful magic boys to open a big portal, so he recruits for wizard Kel'Thuzad, and together they make a plague that kills people and turns them into zombies. They release it into the northern cities of Lordaeron via infected grain, and the third war begins. King okay. Ernest Menafil of Lordaeron hears rumors of a plague to the north and sends his son Arthas and the mage Jaina Proudmoore to investigate. They find that Kel'Thuzad has poisoned a recent grain delivery to the bustling city of Stratholme with a plague. Arthas kills Kel'Thuzad and they head to Stratholme to stop a grain shipment. The duo is too late to stop the townsfolk from eating the grain, and with no cure for a plague, Arthas decides to kill the infected before they're turned into mindless undead. Jaina is aghast and abandoned. Wow. Too late, and y'all just dead now. That's crazy. Abandons Arthas. Arthas purges the city and meets the dreadlord Malganus, who taunts the prince, telling him to find him in Northrend. Arthas becomes obsessed with taking wow. revenge on Malganus and follows him to Northrend, discovering the sword Frostmourne along the way. The sword consumes his soul, and Arthas is corrupted yes. by the Lich King. Becoming we did see that, like... Th Yes, 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 yes. I, I, all these dots are being connected, bro. Shout outs, shout outs for making this video. So that, that yeah, we wow. Dead soldier Damn. Called Death Knight. Now, many of the Lich King, Arvis returns to Lord Because we were told, like, that sword, it just consumes you and, like, and, murders and doesn't that shit get passed down to even more people? His father, King Terran, is Menafil while his forces destroy the city. The Lich King still needs Kel'Thuzad to summon Archimon, so he orders Arvis to stuff the dead wizard chunks in a jar. In order to raise Kel'Thuzad as a lich, Arthas needs yeah, to he's just on a murder so streak. Morph to Kel'Thuzad. Along the way, he captures the Ranger General of Silvermoon, Sylvanas Windrunner, who kills and raises as a banshee. The scourge storm Silvermoon and slaughter of the High Elves, raising Kel'Thuzad as a. I am generally so interested in Sylvanas' stories because um everybody in my comment section tells me Sylvanas was really chill before she became a villain, and that's just something I have yet to even seen. So this will be my first even little sneak peek at that. So let's see. 
forces Norf to kill Thalas. Along the way, he captures the Ranger General of Silvermoon, Sylvanas Windrunner, who he kills and raises as a Banshee. The Scourge Storm Silvermoon oh. and Slaughter of the High Elves, raising Kalfazad as a Lich and corrupting- Well, Banshee doesn't mean anything good, so maybe we're not even going to see that here? I don't know. I don't know. We'll process. see. With Kalfazad resurrected, the Scourge returns south and raid the city of Dalaran for a magic book. Once they have it, Kalfazad summons Archimond, who builds a sand castle and punches it, which destroys Dalaran. Remember that yeah. second Well of Eternity, Illidan made in Hyjal? Archimond needs it to summon the Legion, so he and the gang head west to Kalimdor. Also, a big tree called the World Tree grew in it, and it made the elves immortal. Jaina and Frawl are both oh, met by the ghost nice. of the Deeb, who says they need to stop Archimond at Mount Hyjal or Azeroth will be destroyed. Jaina leads the Alliance to Kalimdor. On Kalimdor, the spooky Medivh ghost meets Jaina and Frawl again and tells them that the Alliance and Horde need to work together. But one group of orcs under Gromash Hellscream gets tricked by Manoroth into drinking more demon blood and become servants of a burning legion again. Jaina frees Grom, who kills Manoroth, freeing the orcs but killing himself in the process. The Night Elves find out Fair. the Legion is invading again and join the fight. Tarandai, now the leader of the Night Elves, orders Illidan to be released from jail to help fight demons. Illidan promises he's done consuming demonic power to stop the Legion. Illidan then promptly consumes more demonic power to stop the Legion, eating the skull of Gul'dan and using the powers to blow up a Dreadlord. Tarandai and Melkor okay. are furious and banish Illidan, who runs off and sulks. The ghost but doesn't Illidan come back again and he's like, kinda good? Ghost of Medivh tells everyone that be he's wrong, manifesting though. because he feels bad for opening the Dark Portal and wants to fix his mistake. The three armies pledged to stop the Legion and build a series of base camps in Mount Hyrule to prevent Archimond from reaching the well. Archimond completely bulldozes through these base camps and reaches the well, so the ancient spirits of the Night Elves called Wisps turn themselves into a bomb and blow Archimond and his army up. They also accidentally blow up a world tree, so the Night Elves yeah. stop being immortal, but at least the third war is over. For all heads south into the deserts of Kalimdor, they lost their amounts the already. Of Orgrimmar, named after Orgrim Doomhammer. In the ruins of Kalfloss, Prince Kalfast Sunstrider destroys the Sunwell so it doesn't corrupt his people. Without the Sunwell, the High Elves go into magic withdrawal, and most rename themselves to the Blood Elves. About 10% continue to call themselves High Elves and break off to rejoin the Alliance. This schism becomes the single largest point of contention among the WoW player base. Illidan, still angry okay. about being accused of serving demons, agrees to serve Kil'jaeden by hunting down and killing the Lich King, who's gone- Okay, he said accused there, so somebody in comments let me know, did he actually do it? Because I do remember, in the cinematics, he ends up, like, being kind of known as the good guy? I'm correct. He teams up with some Naga and Prince Kalfas and casts a spell which severely injures the Lich King. Nerzul the Hat realizes that unless someone ah. puts him on, he will die from his injuries, so he recalls Arthas to Northrend. The Alliance rallies under Grand Marshal Garifos to push the undead out of the ruins of the Kingdom of Lordaeron, now called the Plaguelands. Due to the Lich King being weakened, Sylvanas breaks free from his control and works alongside them to retake the capital city. However, okay. once the Scourge is defeated, she turns on her living allies and slays them. Claiming yeah. Lordaeron for herself, she unites oh. the undead freed from the Lich King's control into the Forsaken. I Arthas do remember that. Arthas to command the remaining Scourge in the Plaguelands and returns to Northrend. Illidan battles Arthas in a final attempt to prevent him from saving the Lich King, but Arthas wins and puts on the hat, merging his soul with Ner'zhul and being frozen in a block of ice. Aye. Aye. To the outlands with Cal so Arthas is like, Arthas is the true Lich King, right? Crazy. Some of them crazy. The alliance will That's crazy. Order on from her. Sylvanas and the Forsaken join the Horde, hoping their military might will deter the alliance. The Horde now consists of orcs, Tauren, trolls, and Forsaken. Who she will later betray, Warren, right? The recently rebuilt city of Stormwind becomes the new seat of the alliance, which consists of humans, dwarves, gnomes, night elves, and a few remaining high elves. The city of Stormwind gotcha. is rebuilt, and they put it under a dome. A night elf named Fandral Staghelm decides to grow a new world tree called Teldrassil, so the night elves can keep being immortal. It doesn't work, but the night elves decide to live on it anyway. While traveling through <laughs> diplomatic meeting with the Horde, King Varian Rin is kidnapped. His ten-year-old son, Anduin, is named leader of Stormwind, with Bolvar Four Dragon acting Somehow. as the Lord. Anduin! Anduin! Ah, uh, yes. The armies of the Horde and Alliance have been greatly weakened by the Third War, so both factions begin to recruit new I soldiers like from among their citizens to depopulate the local wildlife. These citizens become known as the Champions of Azeroth and are the player characters in WoW. Good job, bro. Rock Mountain, Ragnaros starts summoning elementals, so the Champions of the Horde and Alliance banish him back to the Firelands. Then they go up he just gets banished, like, every On couple Calendor, years. Cthulhu and all the bugs break out of jail, so the Alliance and Horde build a stick and use it to break into bug jail to kill Cthulhu. We can kill old gods, but the Titans can't because reasons. Off in the okay. outlands, Illidan and Kalfas steal a floating chandelier ship called Tempest Keep. Velen and the surviving Jernai steal a piece of it and fly off into space. Kalfazad builds a big floating box called Nox Ramus, but he's ruling the plague lands from. The champions of Azeroth break in and kill him. The remaining demons in Fair. the outlands reopen the dark portal in order to invade Azeroth. They are beaten up immediately, and Azeroth decides to invade the outlands to teach him a lesson. This marks oh. the beginning of the crusade. Kalfas discovers that fell energy is a substitute for his sunwell and joins the legion. What elves start doing fell magic in their Damn, so Azeroth used to just be like that, huh? Green. Some are upset about this and join the Horde. The rest continue to follow Kalfas. Later, loser. And I crash land on Azeroth and join the Alliance because it's beside that doesn't have orcs. The Alliance find Khadgar, Curtin, and Trollbane alive and operating in the Outlands. Illyria Windrunner and General Turalyon are still missing. 
from uh. Garrosh Hellscream. The son who Gromosh Hellscream left behind on Draenor. The two become friends and Garrosh joins the Horde. The champions of Don't Adderoth they like fight though? And send him to jail. Then we beat up Kalfast and he gets really big and dies. Kalfast gets resurrected with fell magic and decides to use the Sunwell to summon Kill Jaden to Azeroth. The Alliance and Horde lay siege to the Sunwell, killing Kalfast again and stopping Kill Jaden before he can enter Azeroth. Velen purifies the Sunwell by throwing a dead chandelier into it so Blood Elves don't die of withdrawal. This marks the end of a burning crusade. In Norbrand, Malgos gets mad about how much magic people are using and decides no more magic for anyone. He begins to slurp up all the magic on Azeroth. Why? Because the Kirin Tor of Dalaran, since without magic, wizards are just frail nerds. They teleport <laughs> Dalaran to the skies above the X, I mean, we ever why? He just doesn't Norbrand like the magic? Fairy and Rin is rescued and returns to Stormwind to take his place as High King of the Alliance. The noon improved cool. Witch King Arthas wakes up and decides to conquer Azeroth. He sends That's crazy. the capital cities of the Alliance and Horde, which kills some citizens, but both that is crazy. two factions who team up and send an expedition to Northrend to stop the Witch King. They're joined by the Argent Crusade. Is it just me, or is like the the Lich King for me is like the coolest character, and, all, and I've seen it throughout all of this. I mean, Illidan, he's up there too. I really just like the way the Lich King looks. Group of paladins and just how to stopping the undead. Crazy so is. Death Knights rebel and join the Alliance and Horde. The Lich King resurrects Kelfazad again and moves Noxramus to Northrend in order to fight the Argent Crusade. Kelfazad is killed almost immediately. Also, the dragons kill Malgos, who he stops eating all the magic, and another dragon named Klekos replaces him as the aspect. Some right. of the Forsaken betray everyone and release a plague on a bunch of Alliance and Horde soldiers, including Bolvar Four Dragon. Alex Straza tries to save him by setting him on fire, with questionable results. Yogg Saron wakes up inside of Old Dwarf, so the champions of Azeroth kill him before he drives everyone insane. The Argent Crusade hosts a big job. Also, I think I realized something that I might have slipped up on. I said, doesn't the Lich King get passed down more? But maybe that's just, I'm only thinking that because he didn't mention that he got it from like his old mentor. I think the Lich King and the sword, the, the crown and the sword. I thought that's where he got it from. But I think doesn't Sylvanas just end up getting it and just breaking it? That's the only time it gets passed on. I might be wrong about that. Maybe, maybe it gets passed on one more time. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure. House to decide who gets to kill the Lich King. The winners get to storm Ice Crown Citadel. It's discovered that the charred but still alive Bolvar is being held by Arthas. Led by the High Lord of the Argent Crusade, Tyrion Fordring, the best jousters in Azeroth march on Ice Crown Citadel and kill the Lich King. Shadow yeah. Frostmourne in the process. The spirit of then somebody Arthas takes over, right? From Frostmourne and tells Tyrion that someone needs to put on the evil hat or yeah. will start killing everyone. <laughs> the walking charcoal briquet that is Bolvar. That's actually hilarious that I said that and, and then he showed it right after process. The spirit of King Terranus Menafil is released from Frostmourne and tells Tyrion that someone needs to put on the evil hat or the undead will start killing everyone. The walking charcoal briquette that is Bolvar calls dibs and becomes the new Lich King. Yeah. Frozen in a block of ice. But war of I remember that. Remember that was Deathwind? a cold, that was a cold, cold cinematic. Cold cinematic. thousand years, so he's even crazier than before and he just woke up on the wrong side of a bed and yeah. broke out a deep home. Uh oh. Azeroth in the process. Now everything is on fire in fantasy Utah. Guys. Yeah. The King Azeroth has been Prosper through it, bro. Stop Deathwing from blowing up Azeroth and accidentally turns himself into a giant diamond. Now Ironforge doesn't have a king and the free dwarf clans fight over who should lead. <laughs> they wind up deciding to just make a council. Gilneas gets Fair. overrun by a furry convention of a Forsaken invade and try to plague them. The Shut up, furries. To help, but Sylvanas destroys Gilneas anyway. The wolves want revenge, so they rejoin the alliance. A bunch of goblins that live on an island almost die in a storm, but Frawl saves them, so they join the horde. Dragon <laughs> aspects team up to stop Deathwing. We can't form Captain Planet without the aspect Top of Rocks, e. so they recruit Frawl because he's good at talking to Rocks. This means Frawl has to retire from the horde, so he appoints Garrosh as the new war chief. Deathwing decides he isn't burning things fast enough, so he summons Ragnaros. Garrosh did Lightning nothing wrong. Storm into the Firelands to keep Ragnaros from burning down their trees and kill him for real this time. The aspects realize they can't stop Deathwing without using the Dragon Soul, so Nazdormu goes back in time and steals it. Then Frawl blows him up. Using the Dragon Soul to blow up Deathwing used up all the Dragon Aspects' power, so they aren't as powerful anymore. The Cataclysm ends. Garrosh likes war gotcha. and decides to start one by blowing up the Alliance city of Faramore. Jaina goes oh. crazy and most of her hair turns white. Anduin is on a boat but gets chased by a horde and crash lands on an uncharted island called Pandaria. A mystical Anduin just land out here, bro. Talking pandas. Pandera! On an uncharted island called Pandaria. A mystical land inhabited by talking pandas. Pandas. The Pandas tell the Alliance and Horde we need to stop fighting or wake up the angry old god spirit that haunts their land. The two factions proceed to fight even harder and the old gods start corrupting everything. Anduin yeah. asks Garrosh to help him save Pandaria. Garrosh responds by dropping a bell on Garrosh for declaring war on literally everything. So Garrosh declares war on them and forms a cool new horde and the secret ingredient is racism. The rest of the horde oh, splits off on great. control Vol'jin. Garrosh sees how powerful the old god spirits are and decides he wants to eat one. He starts researching how and learns that the heart of an old god is buried in a sacred Pandaren mountain. He digs up the heart and frozen oh, the god. Land, corrupting all of Pandaria. At this point, Garrosh has declared war on literally every oh, major gosh. faction, all of whom team up and storm Orgrimmar to kill him. Garrosh's horde is defeated and Garrosh is captured and put on trial for setting the world record for most war crimes, ending Mr. That's Pandaria. pretty bad. While on trial, Garrosh escapes with the help of can I can I get a, a a backstory for why everybody thinks Garrosh did nothing wrong? Because it seems like he did pretty much everything he could possibly do wrong. With an evil bronze Maybe people just like his character that much. The first horde drinks the blood of Manoroth. 
Luckily for this video, going back in time creates a little pocket dimension instead of rewriting the entire history of WoW. In this pocket dimension, Garrosh tells his dad that oh, the nice. blood will enslave the Horde of the Legion. So they kill Manoroth, capture Gul'dan, and form a cool new Iron Horde, and the secret ingredient is goblin technology. They still decide to invade Hooray. Azeroth, though, so they build a new dark portal and plug Gul'dan into it like a 9-volt battery. Somehow, oh. this allows their portal to hijack into our portal, and suddenly the Iron Horde is pouring into present-day Azeroth. The Alliance and Horde team up with Khadgar, a resident expert at closing the Dark Portal, and send a strike force called the Iron Vanguard through the portal to turn it off. They do this gotcha. by unplugging Gul'dan and just letting him walk away for some reason. Then, since people keep reopening these things, we blow up the portal with a cannon. <laughs> what? The Iron Vanguard goes around killing the various warlords of the clans. Frawl challenges Garrosh to an honorable orc duel, but then he loses, so he just kills <laughs> yeah. him instead. Yeah, I remember that. Without 90% of its leadership, the Iron Horde gets absolutely bulldozed, at which point Gul'dan shows up with a cooler of that tasty demon blood, and the Iron Horde orcs all join the Legion anyway. <laughs> Why? So Archimonde, who's still alive because it turns why does everyone just trust, bro? The demons that have been getting killed have to be killed in the twisting never, their souls just go back to Argus and reform. Also, this is the same Archimonde that fought in the Third War, because despite this being a pocket dimension, there's only one burning legion somehow. Look, Watt okay. is a really confusing expansion. So is the story just gonna continue in the pocket dimension, or does it just go back and forth? Anyway, the Iron Vanguard teams up with remains of the uncorrupted Iron Horde because apparently- Or is the pocket dimension only for that, like, expansion? Apparently war crimes are okay if other people commit more war crimes. They kill Archimon for real this time. Great. Not <laughs> Great logic. And throws him into space. The Iron Vanguard declares victory and goes home, ending the warlords of Draenor. The Burning Legion sends alternate universe <clears throat> Gul'dan to Azeroth in order to open the tomb of Sargeras and let the Legion invade. And this time he actually does it. He also steals Illidan's unconscious body from jail to use as a vessel for Sargeras. The Alliance and Horde yeah. team up to stop the Burning Legion once and for all in a broken shore and they get absolutely obliterated. Tyr Damn. Damn. Vulgin is murked yep. by a random demon and very yes. disenchanted by Gul'dan. Dude, that shit was sad when I watched that. And for reasons unclear to everyone, including Vol'jin, he decides Sylvanas should be the next war chief, and then promptly dies. Anduin is now High King of the Alliance, and also yeah. got hot. Remember that Dwarf King who got turned into a rock? Facts. Facts. He woke up, and he can talk to Azeroth now. Also, a fat goat turns Ysera crazy, so the champions of Azeroth kill her. Which wow. Which Bolvar wakes up, and he starts making Death Knights to fight the Legion. Also, he's on our side now. Hey! He's still primarily located on the Broken Isle, so Khadgar you will get bodied, though. there to fight them. The Alliance and Horde free Illidan, who disenchants Gul'dan. The Burning Legion is starting to lose, so Kil'jaeden plans to use the Tomb of Sargeras to make an even bigger portal so the Legion can bring more troops from Argus, but we uh, start the tomb and kill him first. For real, this hey. time, Illidan then opens the portal anyway, because he wants to fight more demons. The armies God damn the Illidan. a spaceship and fly to the planet Argus to kill the Titan Argus. They find Illyrian and Torellian, who are on a space crusade. The gang finds out that Sargeras is holding the souls of a Titan Pantheon prisoner and free them. Then they kill Argus, which means the demons can't respawn anymore. Meanwhile, uh -huh. Sargeras finally has a portal big enough to pass through, so he heads to Azeroth to destroy it. But Pantheon stops him and puts him in bad Titan jail, but not before Sargeras yeah. kills his sword into Azeroth in the last ditch after the world soul. That was Legion cool. I don't care, that's what was cool. To bully Sargeras. Back on Azeroth, the Titan World Soul is bleeding to death because it has a big sword stuck in it. Yeah. God is good at making bombs, so everybody wants it. Sylvanas is angry when an elf was mean to her, so she burns down till Drassel. The Alliance retaliates by storming Lordaeron, so Sylvanas blows it up. And when captures High Overlord Sarfang, who feels bad about burning down a tree full of defense. Okay, now I see what you guys mean by Sylvanas was like chill before, but that their character just kind of got ruined. With civilians. I will say though, she's a very good villain. Like when I see the shit she'd be doing, I'm like, damn. I don't like her, and that's a good villain. Champions of Azeroth get a fantasy phone call from Magni. Azeroth is going to die unless they cram a lot of her blood into a magic necklace, so they start doing that. The Alliance and Horde go to Kul Tiras and Xanduar because they need boats. Sarfang still feels bad about committing genocide, so Anduin lets him go. Sarfang rallies the rest of the Horde behind him because they also feel bad about committing genocide. Sarfang yeah. and the No Genocide Horde team up with the Alliance and yeah, the Mar to stop Sylvanas and her pro hurt. Genocide Horde. Sarfang decides at the last minute to challenge Sylvanas to an honorable orc duel. This hurt. Sylvanas agrees. Sarfang this is hurt. Sarfang is about to win, so Sylvanas just insta kills him and tells the Horde she never liked him anyway and flies off. The Horde means nothing to me. Off. Everybody Bye, bitch. The pro genocide horde's mom just left, so they forgive them for all the genocide immediately and before four ends. Things are starting to wind down when the champions of Azeroth accidentally set Nazoth free because a knife tells him to. Then they kill him with a magic necklace and nothing of consequence changes. Sylvanas flies to Ice Crown Citadel, beats up Witch King Bolvar, and steals his hat. Then she breaks it, which makes the sky explode and also. Yeah, that was crazy. Now the afterlife is connected to regular life. There's Zul? Bad, so everyone's about to kill I thought he was... in order to beat up the Grim Reaper. I thought he was still the there. Of WoW. Oh, but this video is three years old, so I think he is alive. As far as I know. Because we watched some cinematics after. I'm pretty sure he was still chilling. I think. Yeah. He, I think he was. Well, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching my reaction. Um, For those of you who have been watching my reactions, like, back to back, you probably saw me, like, just freaking <laughs> realize a ton of things that I didn't before. So, yeah. This was a good video, and it helped me understand the game way freaking more. So, hey, shout out this dude for making it. Um... But yeah, if you guys did happen to enjoy my reaction, please do make sure to like and subscribe. Check out the dude who made this video, and I will see all you dudes in the next video. Bye-bye.